uh, in terms of stimulation, I mean, it's not just the procedures and the pain. They're also having lots of sensory input. The exposure to stressors in the NICU was associated with regional alterations in the brain structure and function on functional MRI. Preterm babies have 70 to 100 episodes of handling in a 24-hour period, especially in the first few days. So we really don't think about the number of episodes that are uh, done for handling. And most of the premature babies get 16 painful episodes in a 24-hour period. So this could last well into the second month of the stay in case of an extreme premature. So it's almost 16 times 60 days. So it's, And then it doesn't stop, it continues as well. So you can very well understand the oral aversion, the emotional withdrawal, the autistic spectrum risk that happens in these babies as well. So there are so many changes which happen in the brain during the critical period they are there. So the axons and dendrites are developing, synapse formation, glial cell proliferation, and the myelination is just starting to form in the reach full term. And this uh, apoptosis is affected by many of the parameters we face like hypoxic ischemia, cytokine proliferation, and so on. And uh, very important that we nurture the brain in a careful way during the crucial period of development. So it comes to early developmental care, which utilizes a range of medical and nursing interventions, the aim of which is to reduce the stress of premature neonates in NICUs. And it might range from simple interventions like light and noise control, positioning or non-nutritive sucking to the complex NIDCAP uh, measures. So the NIDCAP is more complex because it individualizes to a particular baby's needs and it needs training for the person administering it. So Dr. Alice in Boston Children's Hospital suggested that we may try to understand what the infant expects as an individual for comfort, well-being, and a sense of security, which is very vital for a healthy development. And in the NICU, the babies are exposed to bright lights, cold temperatures, loud sounds, lots of tubes, and experience of discomfort and pain, as I explained on a really repetitive basis. The synactive theory mentions the interdependency and regulation of the five behavioral subsystems. So you have the autonomic system, motor, organization of the state, attentional or interactional and self-regulatory. So the more the parents are involved, the more attention and consistency of care the baby gets, the better their states are organized. You allow them to go through sleep phases, REM sleep, non-REM sleep, and the self-regulation is most important and the pain control helps with autonomic regulation as well. So the assessment tool in NIDCAP is a formal and repeated observation of the infant behavior before, during and after a care. And based on this observation, you uh, plan your intervention. So the developmental goal for each infant will be defined according to their skills and weaknesses. The individual caregiving plans and environmental adaptations uh, include non-nutritive sucking, uh, allowing the baby to hold on to things or grasping, appropriate positioning, using boundaries for support, kangaroo mother care, and so on. And here parents are considered as the primary caregivers. A collaboration between the parents and the caregivers reinforces the individualized care. So this involves accurate clinical evaluation, integrating the infant behavior, assessment of pain and stress, family-centered care, couplet care, couplet care of the family mother and the baby diet, breastfeeding and kangaroo mother care, organizing sleep, which means we are aware of when the baby is likely to sleep and cluster the interventions avoiding the sleep time, supportive uh, patient caregiver relation, hospital humanization and patient empowerment, and nursing empowerment, I would add here, and tool for change as well. So it's very important that we practice these values and practice uh, supportive medicine for early developmental care. Kangaroo mother care has been well established and has been shown to have numerous benefits. It favors development, breastfeeding, and sleep pattern. Early developmental care has implications for numerous behavioral and physiological responses, including the expression of emotionality. And animal studies have shown that the outcome is much better, reduced stress response in the babies who are having grooming and licking mothers. So epigenetics plays a role and uh, this has a lifelong impact on their stress level and reactions. Most NICUs are applying some elements of early developmental care, so we need to review our practices, support these as best as we can, and uh, kangaroo mother care, parental presence, and education of the parents, empowering them, changing the NICU design to support this, 
and strategies for pain and stress management. So we should think about noise levels, we should think about relieving pain. Relieving pain doesn't mean use of sucrose all the time. It means you think of measures which can reduce the pain, including reduction in the number of painful procedures. So this is the dyad or couplet that we need to achieve a peaceful mother and a peaceful happy baby. To summarize, neonatology is a complex field. We deal with very fragile, sick babies. What we do has an impact on them for life. So we should be carrying that responsibility. We are producing future citizens and their behavior, their emotional uh, soundness and everything will be affected by what we do. And they have a lasting impact. What we do has a lifelong impact. We should minimize the interventions where possible. It should be part of your team building exercise that we discuss with each other and build it into your unit's work culture.